guys, this is my second podcast that I've recorded recently. Um, just to everybody who knows me, I'm doing a podcast and I want it to be mainly documenting my journey. What journey I'm on is a path to becoming a podcaster, entrepreneur in real estate. I mainly want to be a life coach. I have a life coach, I've had many coaches, and I want to first offer financial guidance. Uh, the financial lessons that I paid for when I was younger, in my, actually not even that much younger, I was 25 years old, uh, and I really wasn't financially ahead. I felt like I should have been a lot more financially ahead when I was 25. I sold everything with my wife, Violet, and we decided to travel to Bali and there I felt successful and fulfilled that I was traveling, but I didn't have much money in the bank account. We were just living for right now and right then. I didn't have any plan for the future. Anytime I got money, I spent it. I had Amazon addictions where I was just clicking, you know, buy now and they'll show up in your door and I would get random things that I didn't need. I was really bad with money. I would always go out to eat. In other words, that was just the lazy way to uh, feed yourself. It's just going and buying food, Uber Eats or restaurants for almost every meal. And uh, that got expensive pretty quick. I just didn't really know how to manage money. Somehow every two weeks, I would always be waiting right away to uh, get paid again. And so luckily I, while we were traveling, we met this guy named Gus. And if you click the link on my Instagram bio, or if you click the link here, I put it somewhere. You'll get to see a podcast that I just re-uploaded. Uh, it's almost three years ago that we met him. And believe it or not, he's sending us pictures from the same spot where we met three years ago. So it's kind of uh, a full circle kind of uh, reunion. So his name's Gus. He did a free session with us. And I do offer a free session. So if you're interested, just reach out to me. And we did a test of the certain things that a grade from one to 10 in different areas of your life. And some of those being finances, relationships, your mental health, spiritual health. And I scored pretty good on certain things, but I put finances at the very bottom. And he taught me a few basic, simple principles. We do have a full course on this, um, but it's all the things that you've probably heard, but aren't following, but it, I'll give you some examples. Whenever you get paid, pay yourself first. What does that really mean? Pay yourself first. Please don't pay the retailers buying clothes. Don't pay the restaurants. You know, you get your check and you're paying everybody else. You're buying things and your money's just going to all these other people, but you're not paying yourself first. So what that means is having an account where you put money towards your future and the things that you want. I really highly suggest this one particular website. You're gonna love thing. If, if you get one thing from this podcast is get yourself an online savings account that you cannot touch. Get an online savings account that is hard for you to get your money out. I don't know if you're like me, but whenever I have money in my savings, I Hope to not use it, but it's somehow some emergency or something comes up that just so happens to be the amount that I have in my savings. And so I transfer it and I spend it and I never really get ahead. So somehow the online savings account, it's out of sight, out of mind. There's no ATMs. There's You can withdraw from this smartypig.com bank account, but it'll take three or four days to get your money. And that's the benefit is... There's really no emergencies that exist out there. So if it truly is an emergency, it's gonna be an emergency three to four days from now. So that online savings pig, that online savings account called Smarty Pig has really been able to help us save for everything. What we do is when we get our paychecks, automatically, it didn't start off this high of a percentage, but automatically we save 25% and we invest 25%. And that becomes an automatic system. He calls it the bucket system, where you have a 
Start at 1% if you have to. But the principle is the percentage and the discipline every single time you get paid to put money into those accounts that will take care of you. One big thing that helped a lot is just making enough money. And as a man, I'm speaking to the providers of the household. And I know a lot of times it could be women because there's a lot of weak men out there. But as a man, you got to make more money. On my last podcast, I talked about how our car got stolen and I was making just terrible money as a server. And my wife had to bear the stresses of it. Yes, you could do what you love. You may love your career, but if you're not making enough, you're just probably spending too much money or you're just not in a vehicle that pays you enough money. And life isn't just all about money, but I'm telling you, you know, maybe in another podcast, I'll, I'll talk about different ways and ideas to make more money on the side or, or just the mentality. But making more money helps a lot to get ahead financially, of course. But have you ever heard of being broke at a higher level? I know people who make way more money than I do, but are so stressed. And at the end of the month, at the end of the year, they have less money. Someone who's making $200,000 a year, but because of credit cards and loans, spend $250,000 a year, that's a recipe for disaster. Living below your means is one of those incredible principles. If you can, as opposed to going out to eat, taking that money, putting it into a future Hawaii trip fund, that might take a year or two to actually save up enough money for. If I'm gonna buy myself a watch two, three years ago when I really wanted one, you put money into a savings account. So every time you feel that urge or that desire that you really want that thing, take the money and put it in the savings account. It may be 20, 30, $40 at a time, but it makes a big difference. And you feel satisfied because you know you're making progress every step of the way. Delaying that gratification does not mean denying. And that's something that was really hard for me to learn for so long. We've been consistently saving and putting money away in buckets and on different things. And he teaches in the finances course to have margins, to not just pay your bill, but maybe an extra five, ten dollars. Don't just pay your rent. Add a little bit of extra. 50 to hundred dollars. As soon as you get your money, spend it before you spend it. If you get $10,000 a month and your fixed means your recurring monthly bills are $5,000 a month, pay them already. And then some, a little bit extra. Before you know it, we've been doing that. We've been paying a little bit of extra every single month to our rent. And it feels so good. And I want to tell you guys that we're two and a half, almost three months ahead of just rent. What would that do for you guys if you had three months ahead of rent paid off? Well, I can tell you for sure, I'm always usually the least stressed out salesperson at my dealership. And isn't that worth it? For me, it is. It gets me out of the fight or flight survival mode and into just the abundance and purposeful mode. And that's what these videos and podcasts are gonna be about is just the overflowing of abundance. And I simply just wanna share some simple things that work for me. The financial course is something that is pretty simple and pretty tangible. So a lot of times there may be some subconscious things blocking us from achieving our financial potential. What am I working towards? Which is that magic phrase you might've heard of called financial freedom. What does financial freedom mean to you? There's different levels. So he teaches us, you know, there's financial bankruptcy, financial scarcity, there's different negative levels. But the ones that I really remember right now are financial security. What would it take for you to be financially secure? If you got laid off, would you be in trouble? If you got fired, if you didn't make as much commissions, would you be in trouble? If an emergency happens, would you be able to handle it? And that's one of the main principles too, is 
the first bucket that you want to fill is an emergency account. And you might have heard of it already. Everybody talks about it, but it's completely valuable to help you feel secure. So what are your three months minimum, bare minimum expenses? Can you save three months into that account so you can have the peace of mind? Along the way, here's a really good tip, really great tip. To help build abundance and getting away from scarcity survival, if you constantly feel that, if you constantly feel tugged from those two feelings, some little hacks could be stockpiling on a few big bags of rice and beans. Those don't perish. They last forever. They're cheap. And they could feed you for a long time. Worst case scenario, you won't starve. You'll build that kind of abundance as you go up. Ultimately, the biggest goal is to have land, a few cows, a few chickens, vegetables, solar panels, my own well, a self-sustaining off-grid doomsday ranch is what I really want. It just also sounds pretty cool. We've been looking at land uh, on the internet, but trying to make some appointments to go see it in person, not really knowing what to look for, but you'll get to start really thinking bigger once you get out of the financial treadmill is what most people are on, where they make money, get a paycheck, spend it all, have to do it again. And Jobs are a means to an end. They're not supposed to be a forever kind of thing. You can save enough money working so that way you don't have to work forever when you're older my parents right now you know all these lessons are i'm late to the party and so are my parents they're late to the party too when it comes to saving for retirement and their future the ones that really do it right you know i sell luxury cars they're writing checks from their trust fund that they set up and established or inherited Simply generational wealth is those very important decisions done early on. Imagine 10, 15, 20 years ago, you invested in Apple or Microsoft, or what about real estate? It's it. two best times to buy real estate. The first best time to buy and invest was 20 years ago, but the second best time is right now. I'm about to go have a wonderful cookout with uh, my wife and some of her friends and some of my friends. Uh, community has been something that's been pretty important to me lately. I'm a logical, hardworking, maybe workaholic kind of guy and I enjoy being by myself, but I find myself, I do need, I find that I do need to take time and invest in my friendships and invest in relationships. Um, so that's what we're about to do. I plan to host friend dinners and just host, just live the good life, have some drinks, have some smokes, and talk about fun things and talk about nothing and just be together. Um, so that's what I'm about to do. Hopefully you guys are having a great week. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for listening. Peace.